Through the clouds on Pete's giant beanstalk. We're almost at the top. And protect the clubhouse kingdom. I'm Goofy of the clubhouse. Oh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse Storybook Weekend starts Friday afternoon at 2 on Central. What a hey little little hot dog day. Now, get ready for Stanley on Disney Junior. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know a guy who talked to a kangaroo? Hi there. <laughs> Who's always ready to learn about something new? Wow. Whose favorite book has all the animals you could wish? Yeah. Who's proud to say his best friend is a fish? That's right, it's my man Stanley. Well, Mr. Williams, we've reached the last question. If you get this one right, you'll take home the grand prize. This is so exciting. Now, here we go. For the big, big trophy and a trip to an animal safari, answer this animal question. Stanley, you might know this one. Which one of these animals is nocturnal? A horse, a cow, an owl, or a monkey? I know the answer. It's the owl. It's the owl. This one's a toughie. It's the owl. Owls sleep during the day and fly around at night. That means they're nocturnal. I don't think they can hear you, Stanley. Let's see. Maybe it's the... Uh, oh, no, it can't be that. Take your time, Mr. Williams. Oh, dear. Uh... uh... Lionel? Don't worry, Stanley. It's just the electricity. What happened to the lights? It looks like the rest of the neighborhood's lights are off, too. It must be a power outage. Good thing we have an emergency kit. What's an emergency kit? Well, it's a bag of things we need in emergencies, like a power outage. We have extra batteries, flashlights, and water. Thanks. Thanks, Mom. This is awesome! Why won't the TV come back on? Well, things like television need electricity to work. I have to know if you picked the right answer. Dad, you need to make the TV come back on. Well, I'm sorry, Stanley, but when the electricity goes out, we just have to wait for the power company to fix it. That's not fair. I want to watch my show. Stanley, we can't until the power comes back on. But what are we going to do until then? Why don't we play some games? That's a great idea. I'm in. But I've got to find out if he guessed right. Dad, he might have won an animal safari. Come on, Stanley. We can still have fun without electricity. Don't you want to play a game with us? Nah, I'm going to go upstairs to check on Dennis. Oh, it's so dark. I don't think it's ever been this dark. Harry, dogs are supposed to have excellent night vision. I guess I'm not like other dogs then, because I can't see you. That's because your eyes are closed. Oh, right. That's better. Stanley, what happened to the lights? They went out, silly. Mom and Dad said there's a power outage. I'm missing my favorite TV show. How can I get the electricity to work again? I might know a place where you can find some answers about electricity. Let's ask the lamp. No, Harry. The lamp won't give you any answers. How do you know? Have you asked it? 
No, I haven't talked to the lamp recently. I was thinking more along the lines of a certain book with lots of facts. The dictionary? Oh, I give up. Wait, I know. We should look in the great big book of everything. Oh, no. Perhaps asking the lamp was a better suggestion. It's the great big book of everything with everything inside. See the world around us. This book's the perfect guide. I wish someone would shut off their power. The lights are out and we can't see those learn about electricity. Well, thank goodness that's over. Electricity. It says here, electricity is one of the basic forms of energy. Why is there a picture of a snake in here? That's not a snake, Stanley. That is an electric eel. An electric eel? Yes. An electric eel is an extraordinary type of fish that has special muscles which allow it to send out electrical charges underwater. Really? That gives me an idea. I'm not quite sure I get it. If I had an electric eel, I could get the power back. I'd start my own electric eel power company. Then we'd always be able to watch TV. Much better. Uh, Stanley? Yes, Dennis? I'm not sure that's such a good idea. Why not? Because an electric eel's electrical charges are not for providing power to things like television. Then what are they supposed to be used for? Well, they... I know. We can find out for ourselves. Let's go inside the book, Dennis. But, Stanley... Dennis, I'm missing the show. I've got to figure out how to get the electricity back. Five, four, three, two, one. Into the book to have some fun. really dark. We're in South America! Oh, great. There's a power outage in South America, too. No, silly. It's dark because we're at the bottom of a muddy river. But I thought if there were electric eels swimming around here, there would be tons of light. Stanley, just because electric eels send out electric charges doesn't mean that they can create light. Oh. Hey, where are they anyway? I don't see any. Hmm. Well, perhaps if you use your stanoscope, we can get a better look. Great idea. Look, Dennis, I think I see something in the mud down there. Is that an electric eel? Yes, it is. But why is it brown like that? The electric eel is brown, so it can blend in with its muddy surroundings. Like camouflage? Exactly. When an animal blends in with his or her environment to protect itself from its enemies, that's called camouflage. Here he comes. Perhaps we should be camouflaged too. It sure is big. You think that's big? An electric eel can grow up to eight feet long. How long is that? Eight feet is as long as a slide. Whee! Of course, you wouldn't see an electric eel on the playground. Wow! How can it see anything down here, Dennis? Very good question, Stanley. An electric eel is practically blind. Because they live in such a dark environment, they use their electric charges as feelers. So that's what they use their electricity for? Indeed it is. They also use their charges to protect themselves and to help them get food. Food? Yes, well, you see, an electric eel doesn't have any teeth. Therefore, it must stun its prey in order to catch it. So electric eels only use their electric charges to protect themselves, to catch food, to feel their way around? That's right. Not to power my house so I can watch TV? I'm afraid not. You see, Stanley, although an electric eel has special abilities, those abilities can't be used to help you with your dilemma. Uh, Dennis, that electric eel looks kind of hungry. Maybe we should... I think we've learned a very important lesson here today. One even I won't soon forget. Dennis, I think we should... 
Like my Aunt Gilly once said. Dennis! <laughs> Let's get out of here! You were gonna bring back an electric eel. Yeah, so the power would come on and you could watch your show. Not anymore. We learned that an electric eel can't come power our house. So now what are we gonna do? I guess I'll just have to sit here and wait for the electricity to come back. Oh, I know the answer. Good one, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Dad. <laughs> it sounds like your family's having fun down there. I wonder what they're doing. Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> hey, Stanley. What have you been up to? Uh, just playing with Harry, Elsie, and Dennis. Lionel was just teaching us a game. Do you want to join us? Okay, I guess. How do I play? You just pretend to be something, and we try to guess what you are. Okay, I know just what I want to be. Are you a snake? Nope. Can you give us a hint? Sure. I live in South America. You're a llama? No. Here's another clue. I don't have any teeth. You're a toothless llama? Wrong. One more hint. I'm electric. I use it as a feeler to get food and protect myself from predators. Oh, I know. You're an electric eel. Yep. Great job, Stanley. How'd you know all that? The great big book of everything. Rather impressive, don't you think? Why don't we all make believe we're electric eels? Okay, Stanley, we'll try. Can you pretend you're an electric eel, too? Hey, this is fun. <laughs> oh, my. Um... Mr. Williams, I'm afraid we'll need an answer right now. No contestant has ever taken this long to answer a question. I'm very tired, and I want to go home. Now... Which of these animals is nocturnal? A horse, a cow, an owl, or a monkey? Okay, it's the owl. <gasps> the cow. No! <sighs> I'm afraid not, Mr. Williams. The correct answer is the owl. Nocturnal means active at night, and owls fly by night. Hey, Stan, you knew the answer all along. Congratulations, honey. I suppose you'll want to watch television now that the power is back on. Hey, Mom, I think it's your turn. Roller Rhino. Are we almost there, Dad? Almost. Just a few more blocks. Did you hear that, Dennis? We're almost there. Yes, but where, Stanley? You were so excited to go out this morning that you never told me where. Just a quick sprinkle of fish flakes in my bowl and off we went. I hate eating on the run. I'm sorry, Dennis. Well, I don't mean to fuss. But tell me, where are we headed? To the toy store. Really? Now that is exciting. Especially because when we get there, Dad's going to get me the most exciting thing in the whole wide world. It's shiny and silver, and it goes really fast. A herring? No, Dennis. I'm gonna get a scooter. Oh, your new scooter. <laughs> now I remember. You've been talking about it for weeks. Here we are. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That's it, Dad. That's the one. It's a beauty, all right. Hm. I wouldn't mind having one myself. Congratulations, kiddo. You made a good choice. Thanks, Dad. I can't wait to get it outside. This is so cool. I'm going to ride it super fast, and I'm going to do uh, zigzags oh dear. and loops. Uh, I don't think goldfish were meant to ride scooters, uh, do you? Stanley! Hi, Lester. Is Dennis getting a scooter? No, indeed. I'd much prefer a pogo stick. No, Lester. I'm getting one. Me too! Cool. We can ride them together. My mom and I just picked this one out. Cool. I like yours, too. I'm gonna ride my scooter with Mimi and Marcy today in the park. You gotta be there. Yeah. Dad, can I go to the park today? Okay by me. See you later, Scooterator. See ya. 
Today's turning out even better than I thought, Dennis. All right, Stanley, let's get a move on. We still have to pick up your protective padding. My what? Your protective padding. You know, elbow and knee pads to go with your scooter. You can wear them along with your bike helmet. It'll keep you from getting hurt. Padding? Can't believe Mom and Dad want me to wear padding. Hey there, scooter boy. Your mom and I will be ready to go to the park in about 10 minutes. So finish getting your stuff together. Okay, Dad. Here it is, my old pogo stick. Oh, man. Dennis, I don't want to wear padding. But, Stanley... Protective padding is very important. If you don't wear it... and you fall down... you could get hurt. Whoops. But I won't fall down. Oh. Oh. <sighs> oh. Uh, Stanley, falling down isn't something you can decide not to do. Sometimes it just happens. I know, I know. But the padding will make it hard to bend my arms and legs. I won't be able to move super fast. And besides, the other kids will laugh at me. Why? Because I'll look silly wearing all that stuff. I mean, what will they think? Well, they'll think you're very smart for protecting your elbows and knees, of course. Well, maybe. But I still don't think I need it. I'll wear my bike helmet, but the padding is definitely out. I'll be fine. Oh, Stanley, I wouldn't go charging out there without your protective padding on if I were you. The bulls and rams and rhinoceroses charge really, really fast, and they don't get hurt. If I were a rhinoceros, I wouldn't need any padding. Rhinos can run really fast, and I've never seen one of them wearing knee pads. Perhaps not, but I believe there might be a reason for that. Maybe we should learn more about our charging friend, the rhino. Do you know where we can learn more about the rhinoceros? Hey, I know! In the Great Big Book of... Wait! What is it, Dennis? Well, I was thinking maybe we could, um, keep this to ourselves. Uh, we wouldn't want a certain cat and dog to suddenly pop up singing a certain song, if you know what I mean. Oh, sure, Dennis. No problem. Yes, we'll keep it between us. Yeah, dude, just the four of us. Oh, good. <laughs> just the four of us. Thank goodness. The four of us? It's the great big book of everything with everything inside. See the world around us. This book's the perfect guide. I wish I had something to protect my ears. Charging rhinos have no fear and they don't need protective gear. Lovely. Hmm, what letter? Rhinoceros. Uh, rhinoceros. R. It starts with the letter R. Here it is. Cool. Wow, look at all the different rhinoceroses he says. Yes, Harry, there are five types of <clears throat> rhinoceroses. The Sumatran rhino, the Indian rhino, the Javan rhino, the black rhino, and the white rhino, also called the square-lipped rhino. Wow, look at their horns. All rhinos have them. In fact, the word rhinoceros means horned nose. Can you tell the difference between these two rhinos? The rhino on the right has one horn, and the rhino on the left has two. All Indian and Javan rhinos have only one horn, but the white, black and Sumatran rhinoceroses have two. Hey, the white and black rhinos look sort of alike. Well, that's because they're close relatives. But much like you and your brother Lionel, their personalities are quite different. What do you mean? Well, the square-lipped rhino is peaceful and unlikely to charge. However, the other one is somewhat mean and very, very likely to charge. He sounds perfect. Let's go. What? But, Stanley, wouldn't you rather visit the kinder, friendlier, Less likely to charge, square-lipped rhino? Nope. Not if I want to learn how to charge without getting hurt. But don't worry, Dennis. We'll have Elsie there to protect us. Me? Her? Hey, you don't think I could protect us? Um, nope. Hm. I may be small, but I'd do a better job than you. Fine. Go ahead, then. Fine. 
Five, four, three, two, one. Into the book to have some fun. Oh! Yeah! Now let's find those rhinos. Here's one. What's it doing? May I suggest you use your stanoscope to get a closer look? Great idea, Dennis. Well, thank you. Anything to keep us away from that rhino. Throwing around in a giant mud puddle. That's called a wallow. A wall what? A wallow. Rhinos make giant mud puddles called wallows. But they roll around in the wallow until they're covered in a thick coat of mud and then they let the mud dry, and it protects their skin from the sun and insects. Hey, maybe the next time I go swimming, I'll try that. Or maybe not. Let me see the rhino. Hm, he doesn't look so tough. I bet I could beat him with one paw tied behind my... Um, Elsie! Here's your chance! Uh... Ah! 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 That was close. <sighs> I don't understand it. My claws didn't put a single scratch on that rhino. Yeah, it was almost like it was wearing a big suit of armor. You don't know how right you are, Stanley. A rhinoceros's skin works exactly like a suit of armor. It's much thicker and tougher than human skin and very important for keeping it safe. So that's why rhinos don't need elbow or knee pads. They already have their own padding built in. Yes, Stanley. Just like your elbow and knee pads keep you from getting hurt, the rhino's skin keeps it from getting hurt. Harry, what are you doing? I'm getting ready in case that rhino gets out of the book. This padding will protect me if he charges again. Or if you fall off the bed. Oh! Sorry, Harry, but I'm gonna need my safety gear when I take my scooter to the park. Does this mean you're going to wear it? Of course. I may not have built-in padding like a rhinoceros, but if I wear my safety gear, I'll be protected like one. Okay, Dennis, watch this. Oh, no. Hey, sweetie, are you all right? I'm okay, Mom. I'm wearing my hefty rhino equipment. Your what? Oh, I mean my safety gear. Oh. Hey, family! Let's go to the playground! Can I go ride with my friends? Sure, sweetie, go ahead. We'll keep an eye on Dennis for you. Thanks. See you later, Dennis. Roll the rhino Stanley away! I found her! Look out! Yeah. Coming through! Sure, I'm glad we learned about the rhinoceros today. I almost rode my scooter without all my safety gear on. Wearing your protective padding was the right decision, Stanley. I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Dennis. But I owe it all to the black rhinoceros. Without him, I never would have learned that rhinos have thick, tough skin that works as a protective armor. Or that safety padding is necessary for people and rhinos. Yeah, and that's super important. Right you are, Stanley. I also learned that rhinoceros means horned nose, because all rhinos have horns on their snouts. Horns are cool, dude! I wish I had a horn on my snout! Yeah, maybe then you wouldn't need me to protect you. You know, Elsie, you were pretty brave with that rhino today. Oh, well, thanks, Harry. Sure! I mean, you know, until you ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Dennis. Good night, Roller Rhino Stanley. Guess how much I love you. Coming up on Disney Junior. His name is Sam, Robin Hood, Tarzan, Stitch. How? You're invited. 
to the magical world of Disney Junior. I can't believe it! You must be joking. I think it's gonna be perfect. I'm going where the sky is bluer. I'm going where the magic begins. I'm going to Disney Junior. Come on, everyone, join in. This will be my greatest performance. On the magical world of Disney Junior. It's all you! Knock them dead! Yeah! Oh, it was amazing! Weekend night starting at 6 5 Central on Disney Junior. Christopher Robin and his friends play in a place called the Hundred Acre Wood, where every day there is always a new and wonderful adventure. It was on one particularly blustery night that this story takes place. Winnie the Pooh was preparing for bed when he remembered a very frightful thought. Tigger had warned him about mysterious creatures called heffalumps and woozles, creatures that love to steal honey. So Pooh prepared himself, determined not to let anyone or anything get at his precious honey. He stood guard as the night's blustery wind turned to rain. He kept his watch hour after hour until... Heffalumps and woozles steal honey. They're black. They're round. They're round. They're down. They're in. They're out. They're all around. They're far. They're near. They're gone. They're here. They're quick and slick. They're insincere. Beware. Beware. Be a very, very, very bear. A heffalump or woozle is very confusal. The heffalump or woozle's very sly. 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 They come in ones and twosles, but if they so choosles, before your eyes you'll see them multiply. Plop, plop, plop. They're extraordinary, so better be wary, because they come in every shape and size. 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 If honey's what you covet, you'll find that they love it, because they'll guzzle up the things you prize. They're black. They're brown. They're wrong. They're down. They're in. They're out. They're all about. They're far. They're near. They're gone. They're here. They're quick and slick. They're insincere. Beware. Beware. When Pooh woke from his very strange dream, he found a troubling sight indeed. The night's rain had flooded his house, and once again, he had but one thought of what he must do, and that was to save his precious honey. So he gathered up some pots and climbed them high into a tree where they'd be safe. Safe, at least, from any heffalumps and woozles, but safe from small bears? Well, that's an entirely different story for an entirely different time. What day it is today? That's right, it's Tuesday. Disney Junior, where the magic begins. Now available on Disney DVD. I'm back. Peter Pan. Did you miss me? Crackers, yeah. Peter Pan returns to Neverland. You lost your shadow, Peter. <laughs> Got him! And needs Jake's help to get his shadow back. Got it! Oh, no, you don't! Disney's Jake and the Neverland Pirates, Peter Pan Returns. Now available on Disney DVD with digital copy. It's almost Mother's Day. Disney Junior celebrates moms. I've got the best present ever for Mama. It's a special present for Mother's Day. These reminded me of you. It's my new favorite. First, watch four days of Gaspar and Lisa. Thanks for your help, Gaspar. That's what best friends do. Including an all-new adventure for Mom and you. Mama's special day. Thank you, all of you. Bye, all. 
Then on Mother's Day, it's a special day of shows and movies all about mom. I can't wait. Hello, mother. Thanks, mom. He needs his mother. And we're going to find out. I love you, mom. And for the first time... It's not every day my dear old mom comes to visit. Meet one very special mom. Mama Hook is here. Hook has a mother? Four days with Gaspar and Lisa.